Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. How y'all doing tonight? It's me, John, and Mama here with Coffee Time. If you haven't been with us, go to our page and, and follow us. And uh, hit the like and notifications. Make sure you're doing those notifications. Several of you have told me you're not getting notifications. Go check your notifications. Maybe you haven't signed up for all notifications. Notifications are many things. Um, there's standard and there's another one. And sometimes it's just in relevant ones. So check your notifications. See if you're getting them. Because some of y'all have said you have it. We are doing the simple southern tradition tonight. Put on some beans today about lunchtime. They've been in the crock pot. Um, they're about done. They are 98% done. <laughs> and um, just looked them good. Got all the rocks out of them, which we didn't find any rocks today. Uh, but we got all the rocks out of them. Started them in the crock pot just with um, put a pound of beans in there. Here's what they look like when they were in the bag. Uh, they're just dry beans. And you just look them, make sure there's no rocks or anything in there. And then you put them in your pot and cover them up about, we like them really juicy, so I covered them up about three inches of water. And uh, turn them on high and stir them every once in a while. Put about a, two tablespoons of baking grease in them and then just enough salt to flavor, salt to taste. And that's it. Okay. Mama's over here. She's like a jackrabbit. She's ready to jump. <laughs> You can't. She she will. She's dipped that fire out about three times. Mama, oh, it's your okay. turn. Go. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stir up some cornbread. You've seen me make cornbread a dozen times or more. I've got a cup of meal. Ooh, pans are pushing it up. Cup of meal. And approximately a half a cup of flour. And thank you. And I got my egg. Ready here. I'm checking it, see if it's good. And this is all I'm gonna do and add some buttermilk. I was looking at my grease over there. I don't want my skillet getting too hot. And that buttermilk is thick as it can be for some reason this time. Little water. Now all I'm gonna do is just stir this up. Make sure all of it's mixed good. Here are the sizzle if I ain't got it too hot. What have you got in there, Mama? Just uh, vegetable oil. Just vegetable oil. No corn oil, this is, I'm sorry. Corn oil, okay. But you can use vegetable oil. You can use uh, solid grease if you want to, Crisco. It'll melt. That's a serious sort of heat. You can feel it. Hear it sizzling. It's already cooking, folks, when you hear that sizzle. It's already getting that crispy ground, brown golden layer on the outside. Nothing but goodness there. Okay, dokie, that's all I'm going to do. Then I'm going to set her right back in there. And worth it. Just let it bake. Johnny and pads will probably be hot. Okay. Now the cornbread will bake about 25 minutes. We'll check it. It's on 400. Is it, Mama? Three, yeah. 400. It's on 400. It'll bake for about 25 minutes. We use self rising flour and uh, it's white lily self rising flour and white lily cornbread mix. Um, so can't beat that. All right, folks, that is the recipe for the cornbread. Y'all will be asking for recipes. Tonight, there's not a lot of recipes to be had. Cornbread, pinto beans, and fried potatoes. Fried potatoes are just peeled, and I'm just cutting them up all pretty thin. Not terribly thin, but just so they're all the same size. You can cut them however big you want, but these will be all the same size, and they're going to be ready for frying. 
uh, we only done four potatoes and a little one. So it's making a big old pile of potatoes. Now potatoes, you want to cook them low and slow. You want to uncover them. Uh, you can cover them up for the first few minutes, but when you get ready for them to brown good, you want to uncover them. And these have just been peeled and washed and now sliced and just sliced them in single file here. And that's it. That's all you do to them. And then cut, cook them slow and low. You don't want to hurry them. You want to get good and done, good and tender. Oh. And we don't always have a side with pinto beans, but we're going to be having it tonight. And that's these wonderful potatoes. Some potatoes. Sometimes we have greens and potatoes both. Sometimes we just have the beans. And sometimes we go with beans and potatoes. What do you all do with your pinto beans? Do you all count the pinto beans as like a sloppy... Um, like you would a goulash or a soup and just have it with the with cornbread or do you count it as that's the potatoes and they're going to fry low and slow oops or do you count it as a um, side we always count the pinto beans as the main dish so we have pinto beans and fried cornbread fry, uh, cornbread and fried potatoes or we just have pinto beans yum yum great supper down home cooking Gina that's what we're all about here just plain and simple down home stuff uh, we don't do fancy whatever we do you can do uh, because uh, we just like simple regular food grew up in Ohio let's see who said that grew up in o Ohio eating all three rosemary isn't it wonderful you have to have tomato with that wonderful meal. This is a homegrown tomato grown right here, just about a mile from our house. We got this from a family at the farmer's market. So we will have that tomato. And then I have some Vidalia onion that I'm going to chop up here too. Love watching you all together. Well, thank you, Miss... I think that was Leanne. D Delina? Delina? I hope I didn't mess up your name. Um, the best dinner it is, Terry. I've been been waiting for this dinner for a while. Um, I thought, I need that pinto bean fix. We ain't had it in forever. We usually have pinto beans once a month at the least. It's been about six weeks since we've had them or seven. It's been a while. So today at lunch, I said, Mama, I'm going to put on some beans. She was breaking beans. And getting ready for a cannon if she gets in. Did you get enough for a cannon? I'm going to can what for a cannon, whatever it is. Whatever it's going to be, because yeah. we ain't had many. may not have a cannon, but I'll pick what I could. So she's going to can what we have, because this year the garden's been strange. I didn't try it. <laughs> it's been strange. We've had good rain this month. It's been a wonderful rain here. But we went a good while there without rain. We went with really some hot temperatures. Um, grew up in the south of Jersey. Uh, Danielle says, this is all new to me. I love it. Oh, really? Well, then you'll like this good southern eating. Um, had sausage stuffed zucchini for dinner. Well, Terry, that sounds great, actually. Hello, Angela. Lemon pepper chicken. That sounds good, too. Hank, how are you? Uh, so now I know what's for dinner tomorrow. For You done made me hungry. Sherry, it's not too late to have them for tomorrow. Uh, you can get those stars. Well, thank you for those stars, Elaine. Uh, hey, Suzanne. Hi, y'all. From Florida. Hot and wet here. Kimberly, it's uh, been wet here too and hot. Uh, looks like a great dinner it is. It's 79 right now. It's 713. That's not bad for here in this time of the year. That We've, rice, cool, that rice cooled it off a lot. Yeah, get the cutting board. You, you've taken the cutting board, oh, Mama. I'm sorry. Mama took. I was emptying the potatoes off, but I didn't return it to you. Didn't you didn't you? return it. Okay, so I'm going to chop up some onion. Mama, you want cucumber with us tonight? Uh, I probably won't eat it this way, but if you want No, I think I'm alright without it. 
I'm gonna dump these onions out here. Some people say don't save onions. Uh, some people say it's okay. We do. I don't know. You do you. Because I don't know. But we always save them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the refrigerator, and we have them for the next meal. We don't waste them. Especially these delicious Bodega onions. This is the last one or the next last one that we have. We have really enjoyed those. Uh, the the uh, friend who sent them, I, I apologize, I don't remember your name, that you lived in Vidalia or very close to it, and you were so gra gracious to send. I almost dropped a set of her ring. You were so gracious to send them to us, and I just want you to know we have thoroughly enjoyed them. Could not have sent us anything better that we would have used better or loved better because these are so good. And just something about knowing they come straight from Vidalia makes them seem even more special. The potatoes, Mama, I'm not going to bring them over there. You all have seen the potatoes. If you want to pin that skillet over here, I'll show them what you're doing. We didn't try to do them on the hot plate tonight. See, and they're already brown and they're already tender. And she's got several in there, but she's keeping them stirred to keep them uh, from sweating too bad. And she's got them on low and slow, but look, they're already getting a wonderful color on them. Those will be done in just a few. The hot plate don't keep them hot enough uh, when you're trying to do deep fry with oil, but it is a wonderful addition to the kitchen because it does keep mama over here on most nights. We've got some, um, we've yet to get our first red onion, uh, tomato, out of the garden. We've got, I'm cutting up onions. Get with it, John. Okay, so we've not got our first red onion. Red tomato. I don't know, folks, it's real. Red tomato, tomato. Maybe I should say it with an English accent. I could, tomato, is that right? You say tomato, I say tomato. Take that for the third time. We've not got our first red one out of Mama's garden yet. Well, we have got several green ones. Whatever Mama, you is, want to show them the harvest today? Whatever it is that's eating on them, eats on every one that's starting to turn. So we're just going to start picking them green and bringing them in. Uh, one of y'all said that the other night, and somebody even sent me a video on how to keep pick them before the birds get to them. So we're just going to pick them all green. I went down there and got all of this. Mama's got a bountiful little harvest and here from I her garden. Bold, bold things, bold these wonderful cucumbers. These these are the crooked right. neck squash. And then some more of those red potatoes that we love so good. So we're going to do something with this little harvest. Um, and then here's the tomatoes. I don't know how it kept from eating on that. It was down See, in the See, she's bottom. having to pick them when they're not even. Um, they're eating but they will wrap it and they'll be just as good. They're eating the green ones. There's several green ones eat. They'll be just as good um, wrapped in wrapped in the house. Um, better than losing them because we're not going to keep them. So Mama did have some beautiful tomatoes. Look at that. And we're going to eat a few of them green. We're going to eat a few of them red. I can't wait. To get, maybe this one right here will be a delicious red one with a with a good sandwich when it grows up. We've got a little mark on it. We'll see if that lasts. And then, but now the people are having luck because here we got this at the farmer's market. So we will cut this tomato up tonight. Can't wait to taste this one because um, I know it's grown really close to our house makes it feel more like a home tomato. The others have been delicious though. I'm not going to knock them because we have enjoyed our uh, our farmer's market. We are so blessed to have a farmer's market because a lot of people don't have farmer's markets and just the idea of having a bad tomato season and then not having a farmer's market to depend on either that's kind of depressing because I am very glad to have the farmers market. Thankful for the farmers. We we really try to support farm to table. 
Uh, if we know somebody's got something locally, we love to get it. Mama got some beautiful corn last weekend and these beautiful tomatoes too. Do you want to, did you just say you wanted a cucumber? Uh, I'll cut one, Mama. You want me to get one of those out of the refrigerator? It don't matter. Cucumbers, want... a cucumber. We'll take whatever we can get. Now these are smaller. Decisions, decisions. What to do? Probably a cold one might taste better, Mama. Yeah. This is the neighbor's <laughs> Gonna cut this tomato off from here. There it is, folks. Beautiful. And this right here is one of the stars of the show. Is this um, squash relish. Now this is the squash that it starts out as. The yellow crooked neck. So it's this is what's in here, canned, and it's got uh, red peppers, red and green peppers, red and green peppers, like bell peppers, and they're pickled. So it's a pickled. And this is what I call and onions. This is what I call chow chow. Mama says it's squash. Squash relish. Squash relish, and she makes it. A friend of mine made it with cabbage the other day. And said it was delicious. We may have to try adding cabbage to this instead of just doing the standard chow chow. But it's get it's hard to get Mama to switch. I'm not missing the squash pickles. I'll make a bet. She you. ain't fooling with that mess. That's what she usually says. Uh, I'll make a batch. Mama, how come you don't usually say that in front of your friends? I do say that in front of my friends. Yeah, you, know, you usually say I'm not going to do that. Me, you'll say I ain't fooling with that mess. Now don't start. Oh. I ain't feel that mess, she'll say. I ain't messing up my pickles. Just try them. Uh, I ain't feel that mess. I'll make you, a, make you some. A separate batch for you to eat. <laughs> no, we don't have to make a separate batch, Mama. We'll just keep on keeping on. Now these, I'm just going to cut in little spears. Um... I don't know why we don't do it anymore. Maybe because we had hot cucumbers. I don't know. Mama used to have um, cucumbers and she'd put them in a bowl of ice water on the table. When I was a kid, how can you not do that now, Mama? I, I did them for you, Daddy, I guess. Did you have hot cucumbers back then or you didn't keep them in the refrigerator? Well, especially if I just went and gathered them out of the garden. I... Yeah, if we just got them out of the garden. But... I did. But I put salt in the water and uh, ice. ice and pour water over them and let them chill good and get that salt set in after I had time. Now look at that beautiful tray for tonight. Tomatoes, cucumbers, and some beautiful Vidalia onions for our pinto beans. Now our cornbread is already rose up there. Looks like he's ready to say I'm ready, but he may not quite be oh. yet. <laughs> Potatoes are about ready, and the beans should be, because they've been on there since about 12.30 today. Is that right, Mama? 12.30? I was in the garden. I don't Mama know. wasn't even in the house. John, you need a bigger cutting board. Well, Linda, I probably do. Um, can't hear Mama very well. Marilyn, we never can. She just mumbles around. <laughs> And she runs around like a chicken with its head cut off. And I said, Mama, speak up. And she'll say, okay, I will. And she goes right back down. Like <laughs> You're going to get whipped. Right Trust the truth, friends. Mama. Trust the truth. Chow Chow has a lot of recipes. There are so many. Yeah, there is, uh, Patricia. What was I going to say a while ago about the, oh, the bigger cutting board? I have got big ones. But this I have got. This picture on it. <laughs> yeah, this is the coffee time when I use them mostly. I've got big ones. I've got medium ones. Um, I've got the industrial. I want to say plastic, but they're white. You know, oh, like right. you find. Right. What is they'll it? fit over the whole sink. I've got all kinds of sizes of cutting boards. I've got chopping blocks. But I don't have them right in here. We keep these in a little stand over here. We've got several of them that aren't coffee time. I've got one that 
Mama won't let us use this coffee time, but this one we already started using, so she will let me use it. Ask the Santa Claus one. I won't let you use And then we got a Santa Claus one, too. But this is a good size. This is my favorite size um, because I like to use it kind of like a, a little prep board and a serving board. Uh, what's it called? Mise en place or whatever. Uh, everything in place. I forget. Anyhow, I know some things. I just don't know how to use all those things, those words. Anyway, so this is my favorite size. And, uh, yeah, I guess a lot of times it looks too crowded. But I use it. Um, the big ones, to me, they're hard to wash. And uh, it's hard to rinse them. Then you got to dry them. And if you all know me, I'm pretty simple when it comes to stuff like this. Um... I don't know. Somebody said the other day that I made them a nervous wreck every time I used a knife. I don't know, but my knife skills are probably not culinary expert uh, skills. But they've got me by for years and years. Um, worked in a restaurant for about 14 years. and Done all kinds of things with them. And I may cut myself next time. And I have cut myself before pretty good. But I get around with them. Everybody has their own little way. I love your uh, shirt, John. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I've got it covered up with apron. It's just a regular old shirt. But thank you. <laughs> um, it says, um, we had leftover potato soup. Oh, Brandy, that is wonderful. I love potato soup. And y'all know Mama likes it plain. I like it with some green onions and some other stuff. So Mama will be wiping up the juice that... Uh, came off the board. Yeah, yeah. Over here, some juice. Let me. I'll go and get it before she gets over here. <laughs> Sorry, I got y'all so close, but I'm trying to read. Um, these comments go so quick and they're so small. I either had to look through the bottom of my glasses like this at y'all, or bring it up close enough that I can actually see y'all. Mountain cooking with Mixy mixes great northern. Um, let's see here. You like experience. Great Northern Sand Pintos. Never heard of that. For the soup beans, I tried it very good. Uh, Benita, I like the mixed beans. I buy them mixed sometimes. Um, Northern beans usually are thicker. I like thinner, soupier soup beans. Um, but when you put the Northern in there, it makes a thicker sauce usually um we do like those sometimes my dad did not like them he did not like any white beans he didn't like mixed beans he liked only pintos so that's what we really do i will use the others sometimes i just use plain old white beans and don't mix them and put ham hock in them oh that's some good like a, if you have a leftover ham bone from christmas that's my favorite is white beans with that what did you two do? We hung out in a sit. Jackie, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, what did we do today? You hang out in the AC today? I've worked today. Um, but uh, I hang out in the AC all the time. I, I, I'm allergic to the sun, I guess because of the medicine I take. But uh, if I had my sleeves rolled up like this outside, I, it would be miserable for three days. It would just be pintos, mayo, cornbread, and squash relish uh, with taters on the side. Debbie, my dad used to eat that with mayo. I don't. I, w I haven't tried it in years and years and years. He made me try it one time. John, I think you do just fine. Well, thank you, Glenda. Do I make you nervous with my knife skills on my little tiny cutting boards? Um, thank you, Miss Glenda. I take your cookbook in my car and enjoy it on a break. Well, hope that is nice. I, Mama reads cookbooks like like novels, too. Mama will take a cookbook. She'll go cover to cover. She reads every word in it. I love corn dogs and chowder. Uh, Veronica, is that corn dogs chowder? Is that one? Is that like chow? Um, what is that? Corn dog chowder. Here in Oklahoma, macaroni and cheese, rotisserie chicken, 
with green beans. That's what's for dinner. That sounds great. She lets you get a rotisserie chicken from the grocery. That's what we do. We don't have one here in Jellico, or we probably have a rotisserie chicken about three times a week. <laughs> we, uh, we uh, when I work in a, the, the a city next door south, uh, they have they have a rotisserie chicken a store that has rotisserie chicken. And a lot of times mom will say, bring one of those chickens home and we'll have it for supper and then I'll fix some sides or um, we'll use it the next day for something else. Mama's going to flip the cornbread out. Let's watch her do that. Now this is the cornbread that she just made and put in there. Um, see it was cooked on 400 degrees for 25 minutes and perfectly golden brown. The recipe is not what makes that golden brown cornbread though. It's the skillet you cook it in. That's cooked in a cast iron skillet. It's perfectly seasoned. That skillet's probably never seen anything but cornbread in its whole existence. And its existence is probably 45, 50 years, well, older than that. Well, my original cornbread when your daddy was alive was the bigger right. cast iron that I've got over there. But I still don't use it for nothing except cornbread when we have company. Uh -huh. But this smaller one, I've used it since it's just for me and you. And then I've got a small, 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 one. real small one. There's the potatoes. Look how beautiful golden brown they are. Mama, you did just so good. I got a small one I picked up in an estate sale. And uh, it's just the seven inch. This is a small one. And I use it sometimes uh, when it's just made for cooking for some reason. Um, you can find them in a state so if you see a cast iron skillet if it's nice and shiny and black on the inside definitely don't pass that one up that one's been seasoned for years i'm sure my little seven inch that i picked up has seen many a good meals and probably it's just some lady who is or gentleman it doesn't matter but it, just somebody who's really took care of it and cooked in it and enjoyed it for many years because you can tell you can tell how wonderful they are you can wash them um, it's a myth that you can't wash a skillet or cast iron um, years ago people made their own soap bought soap that was full of lye lye soap and you couldn't wash skillets in it because it would strip all the coating off from them but now good old dawn or game whatever you can use is, is game make dish liquid now Palm olive, yeah. I think I was just naming soap. Joy. Joy. All those. Those are fine to wash your skillets in. And you need to wash your skillets. if you, Especially if you're cu cooking meat in them. Um, wash them out with some good soapy water. The key to that is drying them well. Um, once you wash your skillets, your cast iron, put them on your stove eye. And the eye is the burner part, whatever you want to call it. We call it the eye. Someone asked me the other night, I said, why do you call it an eye, John? I thought, well, I don't know, other than my whole family calls it that, and it's always been called that my whole life. Here is the thing. I just took up, I didn't want to bring that big old crock pot over here. So here's the you delicious. You want a bowl for your beans, a little hot bowl? Oh, yeah. I've got to have a bowl, Mama. Um, yeah, I can't eat them on a flat plate. Now, my dad would, because he didn't like much juice. I'm juice 100%. I like the juice as well as the bean. Mama just brought a little sampling over here, but here they are. They're good, and look at how pretty they are. You're gonna stand them up to see. <laughs> good and rich brown beans. They've cooked all day. Sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and dip them up some. Now, when I eat bean soup goulash, any of those things, that's about all I want in my bowl. I don't get a big old bowl full because I don't want it so hot that it takes me all evening to eat it. I want to eat a little and let it cool and eat a little bit more and that'll be hot. Do you want uh, tea with this meal? Um, or are you drinking coffee? I am drinking coffee, uh, but I think I'll pass on the tea. I think I'll go with just some water I got over here. Okay. But there is fresh tea in there. So this is what we normally do. We get a little bit in our bowl. Let that be cooling. 
Mama, that's a lot of potatoes you're getting for you. Look at this potato. Now, this is what I'm telling y'all. When she tells y'all, oh, that's too much, John. She will eat the potatoes. She'll eat the sweets. But now you put pork chop on there and she'll say, Don, that's too big. That's enough for me, Mama. Thank you. Okay. You, gonna, you want go. ketchup? No. You want ketchup? Uh, mm, probably not, but if you got some right there handed over here, we'll, it'll be an option in case we do want it. I don't always eat ketchup with my potatoes, but sometimes... This ketchup don't feel like it's got much in it. I've used it for something the other day. Oh, so you I don't it. care for the French's as good as that. this product review time. I think I showed y'all it was pretty good. Then it is pretty good, but it's not as good as the Heinz I'm used to. I uh, used it again. And I thought it tastes a little different. There's some beautiful onion going right in there uh, to those beans. I saw it in my whole plate. Mama, do you need salt? No, I don't now. Cause I shook that out and it came out. Do you want some cucumber? I don't believe I never eat cucumber this And a little bit of cornbread. I don't put my cornbread in my beans like normal people. I put mine on the side like this. And then I just pinch a little bit off as I go because I don't want it to dry up all my soup. Ooh, lordy. You don't know how strange you are and what you eat strange until you start explaining it to your friends on Facebook when you start saying, well, here's what I do. Why, why do I do that? I don't know why I do that, folks. Well, hey, it I'm just seems. Of that cucumber. It just seems, and I put my little little bit of it. People went over before, how do you eat chow chow with beans? Well, I just put a little spoonful right there in the corner. Put my cornbread there. Then as I eat, I put my onions in it, and then as I eat, I pink off cornbread, pink off Pick off a little piece of that, and then I can just eat it like normal. We didn't it. I was, getting I was demonstrating, Mama. You eat. Mama is. Mama has zero patience. I was hungry from working today. And you see her trying to make that cornbread. She was as nervous as a cat, as they say. <laughs> just want to hurry and get it done. <laughs> She'll say sometime. Now, don't talk half the night. Let me get this started. You have to get in there in order for it to get done. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's pray mama <laughs> dear heavenly father we thank you for this food and we thank you for the precious hands that prepared it dear lord we just pray that you'll nourish us with it as we eat it dear lord and dear lord remember our friends that are watching and dear lord, we just pray that you'll answer each and every prayer request that's out there those both, both spoken and unspoken dear lord and we just pray for a hedge protection around us all dear lord in your precious name we pray amen, amen. all right my mama tried the potatoes these look like they're just, look at that. Perfectly brown, some tender ones. That's why you want them. Got a little crunch to them. Got a little tender to the others. That's what I was wanting, potatoes. Delicious. Potatoes and cornbread. And those don't even need ketchup. Mm-mm. Are you eating the beans yet? No. You know mm. me, I was diving into potatoes. <laughs> Mama tickles me with potatoes. Mashed potatoes, fried potatoes, any potato, even all gratin, she loves. Green beans, she eats them okay. Not a lot of veggies. Potatoes is my main veggie. <laughs> mm-hmm, starch. Mm. And your daddy used to say he knows one thing we'd have for supper every night would be a potato of some sort. <laughs> There'd be some potatoes there. We'll try these beans to see how they... Now, there they are. That's a little bit of onion in them. Look at those beautiful pinto beans. They are done to perfection. They taste wonderful. So what I do is I'll get a little bit of that cornbread off. Just like that, get a little bit of that chow chow or whatever mama calls it. A little bit of bean all together and it's got the onion in it. It's a beautiful bite. The only thing that can make it any better is if we had some wonderful beet pickles. 
Do y'all like beet pickles and do you eat them with your bento beans? They're the purple ones. Usually they're round. Mama gets them. We used to grow them. You grow them. They're dirty. You have to boil them and peel the peel off from them and they stain. It's quite a process in it, Mama. Yeah. You have to get them young and early so they'll be about that big instead of about this big. If you get too big, you have to slice them. And they're a lot like of work. Huh? I don't like them when they're sliced as good as I do little old ones. So Mama found a brand. Do you know the brand? No, I got it at Food City or Food Food City. Mama found a brand of pickles. Probably Food City brand. A beet pickles in the store, a can, and they're cheaper than trying to grow them. And she recans them in her jars and puts her ingredients in them in her pickle seasoning, and they're just like homegrown. They're just plain canned beets. They're, they're plain them. canned beets. They're not pickles in the store. So she pickles them instead of just cooking them. And they are to perfection. Yeah. So that's what we they're do. They're all the little round. And they're all the perfect round ones. There's none of that peeling. So if you're ever canned beets and you think, boy, I'd like to have some good old-fashioned canned beets, go to your grocery and find some canned beets Take them home and pickle them the way you always used to pickle them. Just make sure they're plain, not got anything in them. Plain, nothing in them. Okay. That sounds good, Mama. So that's just a little cheat you can do if you've always had gardens and you don't want to have a garden. Now, maybe you're not able to have a garden, but you'd like to have some pickled beets. Good and good for you. Anything else, Mama? Mm -hmm. All right. A beautiful southern lunch or supper tonight. And uh, everything tastes wonderful, Mama. You got them beans seasoned up just perfect. Mm, you did, damn. I just put them in the pot. I'm going to try this wonderful tomato. It is good. I'll be ready for fall, but I'll hate to see the tomatoes go. That tomato is outstanding. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Tastes just like homegrown, Mama. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. It is. <laughs> Grown right here in that dirt. Right in the same dirt. All right, folks. We're going to say good night. We're going to say you all find you something good to eat. Make you some memories. Enjoy your evening. Be blessed. Wake up in the morning and just be thankful and find something good about tomorrow. And enjoy every second of it. You got anything else, Mama? Not that I know of, huh? Well, scoot up a little bit. Oh, I Say goodnight, Mama. Good night, Mama, and God bless you all. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.